From the heart of Philly, this is CBS News Philadelphia dealing with another traffic nightmare on I-95. Part of the busy roadway in the Northeast will be closed for the next several days after a truck hit an overhead railroad bridge. We'll have the latest on the delays and the repairs underway right now. An intense video as a father and son are injured in this overnight house fire in Philadelphia's Frankfurt neighborhood. We have the latest on their conditions. And a live look outside our stretch of rainy weather continues with another round of showers this morning. Good morning to you. And welcome to the News at 7 streaming on CBS News Philadelphia and on Philly 57. I'm Janelle Burrell. And I'm Don Bell in for Jim Donovan. Thank you for joining us this morning. First, let's get the next weather forecast with meteorologist Kate Bilo. Good morning. Good morning, Don and Janelle. Yeah, today is one of those days where you may turn us on. Listen to what Chandler and I have to say and then just get right back in bed and maybe work from home because not only is it a messy weather day, it's a slow, slow commute day as we just told you. Chandler will have more on that in just a moment, but look at the conditions out there. It is raining. It's raining pretty heavily and waves of rain will continue all day long. It stays cool with a raw east wind, so you need the raincoat, the waterproof jacket, but also an extra layer to keep you warm if you have to walk in this at all today. And there could even be a rumble of thunder or two this afternoon. You can see this batch of rain near Hagerstown, Maryland has produced some lightning and thunder that's starting to diminish a little bit, but this is going to be moving through during the next couple of hours and can't rule out some flashes of lightning, rumbles of thunder here in our local area. As we sweep the area, you can see right now the heaviest rain is Burlington County, Atlantic County, down toward Cape May. We've also got some pockets of heavier rain just to the north and west of the city and more moving in as we speak. Right now it is raining at least moderately heavy in the city and the steadier rain right now is up across northwest Philly up around the Chestnut Hill, Maniunk, Roxborough area. More coming tomorrow. Tonight into tomorrow this next system comes in right on the heels of the first one. They're kind of connected by a stationary boundary here. So rain today, rain tomorrow and you can see the temperatures are not going anywhere. Upper 40s, it may turn just a bit more showery this evening. A little bit of a low. We'll see if they can try to sneak a Phillies game in, but it doesn't look like a nice night for it. I'll have more on the timing of the rest of this system coming up in just a few minutes. But for now, Chandler, I'll send it over to you. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Kate. Well, this morning, it's a tough go. We're starting off on 95. But looking in the southbound direction, right near the airport, we do have a two-vehicle crash. Looks like the tractor trailer and the stopped camera is blocking it. Here you can see here partially blocking that far right lane and the right shoulder, but it's the northbound direction that we're really talking about. Visibility definitely an issue. At one point this morning, we could see the delays on 95 North start around Girard Ave, but visibility not allowing that. We do have delays starting right around Girard as you travel toward the closure point on 95 northbound right at the Betsy Ross Bridge, Aramingo Avenue interchange. It'll take you about 30 minutes traveling on 95 northbound from the Walt Whitman Bridge up to the Betsy Ross Bridge where all traffic is forced off there. Usually this takes you about 10 minutes, so about a 20 minute delay there in that northbound direction. Stop traffic starting right around Girard, approaching the scene there. We're going to have a live update for you. The detours, they are in place, though. If you even want to travel to that exit 26 or a lot of other alternates available, you can always take the Schuylkill westbound to the Boulevard northbound or traveling locally, Torresdale, Frankfurt, Richmond Street, all alternates to the 95 northbound closure, Janelle. All right. Thank you, Chandler. And as Chandler has been telling us, I-95 North closed in northeast Philadelphia after a truck slammed into an overhead railroad bridge near Aramingo Avenue. And here's the bad news. It's going to take a while to fix it. Yeah. Days, in fact. CBS News Philadelphia's Ross Mitte is live with a closer look at the repair work already underway and the impact it'll have on drivers. Good morning, Ross. Good morning, Don and Janelle. Compared to last night's commute, traffic really hasn't been too bad this morning on the northbound side of I-95 uh, here in Port Richmond, and that's despite the fact that the stretch of I-95 on the northbound side still shut down because of that uh, collision yesterday. And we have seen, we haven't seen these crews uh, take much of a break. Although interestingly enough. Just within the last five or ten minutes, we've seen them drape this large blue tarp over the area where they've been working all during the overnight hours. Not sure if they are taking a break or if this is part of the repair work they've been doing. But I do want to give you a closer look at what they were doing during the overnight hours. So take a look at this video. There are road closure signs posted uh, while these crews have been working, and our cameras captured them using blow torches on the bridge. Sparks have been raining down around them all throughout the night. And PennDOT officials say they had to shut down I-95 after that oversized truck hit a section of a con. Rail bridge over the highway yesterday afternoon. 
And this was the result. This was the scene during rush hour yesterday evening. Drivers were backed up for miles along I-95 in northeast Philadelphia. Most of them forced to sit in that stop-and-go traffic, although some drivers did try to escape the backup by hopping off the highway early, although they didn't have much luck with that. I got off with Drive Avenue just to get off 95. I was crawling, crawling. You know, like long real slow. Yeah. People just looking. Everybody just looking out like, where can we get off? Like, what's the next exit? We, we just wanted to get off for real, for real. And we got the kids in the back. Yeah, everyone was trying to get out of there, but uh, there was no escape. Now, here's your workaround. PennDOT says while they're making these repairs, drivers who are heading north on I-95 will be directed to use the Betsy Ross Aramingo Interchange and then turn right on Aramingo Ave and then one more right again on Adams Avenue in order to access the 95 North Ramp and hop back on the highway. And there are plenty of signs in place, and the detour is impossible to miss. They force you off the side of the highway onto this interchange, and then uh, th that allows you to get back on the highway. And again, so far, traffic has been too bad this morning on the northbound side, although that could change come the evening commute. And again, we expect this closure to be in place for the next several days. Janelle Donald, send it back to you in the All studio. right, a headache out there for sure. Ross, thank you so much for that. A new shipping channel now open around the wreckage of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore. The tugboat Crystal Coast pushed a fuel barge through the channel past the bridge wreckage yesterday afternoon. Baltimore's shipping channel has been blocked since the deadly bridge collapse last week. The White House says that President Biden plans to visit the site on Friday. The president is continuing to lead a whole of government approach to the collapse. President Biden and his team are working with Governor Moore, the congressional delegation, Mayor Scott, and numerous state and local of officials to reopen the port, rebuild the bridge, and support the people of Baltimore. The Department of Labor is also working with local and state officials to help people who are out of work because of that port closure. Well, a father and his young son back in our region being treated for burns this morning after this devastating row home fire in Frankfurt. Cell phone video capturing the intense flames. The fire breaking out around 1.30 this morning. This was on Griscombe Street near Church Street. We're told the father is stable with burns to his upper body, but his eight-year-old son is in critical condition with burns to 60% of his body. We'll have a live report with more on this story coming up at 7.30. Atlantic City Mayor Marty Small is addressing his search, the search of his home and cars last week by the Atlantic County Prosecutor's Office. Mayor Small stood with his wife, son, and daughter yesterday at a news conference. Small's wife is the city superintendent of schools. Mayor Small said allegations that a crime was committed in his home are false and that he and his family are dealing with a personal matter. The mayor did not say what that personal matter is, but he did address accusations that he says were made against he and his family. There's no corruption. We don't have Atlantic City Housing Authority money in our house. We don't have City of Atlantic City money in our house. I didn't steal anything. This is a human element. This is a family issue. And anyone that works in this uh, organization I always say family first. The Atlantic County Prosecutor's Office responded, issuing a statement saying, in part, law enforcement personnel from their office conducted a court approved search of the mayor's residence on Thursday. They went on to say the search was conducted in the highest professional manner. Today, the first of 10 permanent satellite election offices will open in Philadelphia. The offices will allow voters to register, request mail-in ballots, and will serve as permanent locations to return ballots. Mayor Sherelle Parker and various community leaders will be at the opening today in University City at 40th and Market. That first office had a soft opening last week. The remaining nine will be open in time for the general election in November. All right, get your $2 ready, Don, uh, because the Powerball jackpot is rolled over again because no one has hit the jackpot. Nobody won last well, night. Well, listen, uh, newsflash, uh, you can't win if you don't play. True. I need to take my own advice uh, and jump in the game. CBS News Philadelphia is with Keisha Bailey. 
Joining us here with the latest on lottery fever. And you need to get in the game too, but Keisha, we're gonna we're gonna convince you. Yeah. Can I borrow two dollars? <laughs> can I borrow two dollars? There you go. Or can I double into yeah, borrow four dollars? Yeah. Okay, what are we gonna do here? That's so smart. So after no one won the one billion dollar grand prize Monday, is anyone really ever going to win this jackpot, or will folks just give up? And are you feeling lottery fatigue? Well, I asked a lot of people, and they all said no. Every once in a while, I get this feeling, gut feeling, go play. Why not? People just want to feel lucky. Money, of course. <laughs> it's not doing it for the fun of it, right? So the Powerball jackpot is now estimated at just over $1 billion for Wednesday's drawing. So if you win, you can cash out and receive a one-time payment of $527.3 million or receive up to 30 annual payments. And as we know, the jackpot has been growing for months. And as of now, there have been 39 consecutive drawings without anyone winning the top prize. But if you are feeling lucky, well, what would you do with all that money? Take care of the family, get out of debt, help a lot of people, retire. Where I grew up at, I grew up in Strawberry Mansion. I would redo the whole Strawberry Mansion. I would sit back, I, I would give myself three to six months to contemplate my next move. Very smart. So drawings are every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday night at 11. Don, do you know? That, that man was right. very thoughtful. He said, yeah. I need three to six months to really let this thing sink in. That's a long time. <laughs> Who would be the first person you would tell? Oh, that's a good question. That's a I have to get back question. to you on that one. Okay. I'd have to tell that my that wife. Yeah. Oh, good answer. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right, Wakisha, good luck when you play this week. Okay, well, I'm coming to your desk afterwards. I'll be waiting for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she wasn't going to forget about that. Thanks, Wakisha.